Hello everybody. Today it is my third lecture of the module 11. In module 11, I was discussing about the response spectrum for different type of shock waves and in that connection I have discussed how the response spectrum can be used to calculate the peak displacement. I have obtained the response spectrum for displacement only but uh, one can obtain the same for velocity and acceleration also because in earthquake resistant design the response spectrum for acceleration is important because depending on the time period of the structure we can find out the the acceleration that the structure may experience due to some ground motion and depending on the soil condition. However, in this lecture we will discuss the general development of response spectrum for pulse wave and the principle is same even if we uh, attempt to find the, the response spectrum for seismic motion or uh, building subjected to ground acceleration etc. Okay. Now, today I will discuss the shock spectrum. Shock spectrum is nothing but the response spectrum for the tangent type of excitation and our discussion will be shock spectrum due to half sign pulse. Okay. So, let us see the outlines of today's lecture. The response of basic oscillator to half sign pulse and construction of response spectrum will be first discussed. Basic oscillator I mean that it is a single degree freedom system having no damping. In engineering application we have seen that damping is very small. So therefore effect of damping is only important in case of resonance. However in case of force vibration phase the damping effect does not influence or damping does not influence the peak magnitude of the response so much or to a significant level. However, it plays a very important crucial role to limit the displacement of the structure to a finite level when the system natural frequency coincides with the driving frequency. So, uh, we will develop the response spectrum for the basic oscillator and then we shall utilize this concept to find out the response spectrum for a continuous system just like a cantilever pole that I have taken for this example in today's class. I will discuss how the peak response can be obtained using the response spectrum. So today our excitation will be of this type there is half sine pulse wave that means a pulse uh, wave which is of uh, a half period is taken into consideration and then we express the equation for the excitation as ft equal to p naught sine pi t by td uh, for t less than td. td is the duration of the pulse you can see here and uh, it is 0 after td. So you can see that the system is subjected to force vibration when the force function is a sine function and the duration of the uh, force response is up to td. After td the system is free from any external disturbance or force and then it is subjected to free oscillation. So after TD the system undergoes free vibration. So there are two phases of the motion one is force vibration phase and another is free vibration phase. Okay. So let us discuss this uh, first the force vibration phase that is the uh, T is less than TD. TD is the duration of the pulse. Now here the FT 
there is the forcing function is given as p naught sin omega t where omega is the frequency of the excitation and uh, here we can see that omega is pi by td where td is the duration of the pulse initial conditions are taken as zero okay now let us find out the response of the system to half sine pulse now in that connection i will tell you to recall the expression that we have derived in case of force vibration excitation okay so actually uh, today we are going to find out the response of a system which is subjected to a sinusoidal input harmonic force input up to a time td and then it is subjected to free vibration okay so system is our single degree freedom system with spring no damping is considered the reason for neglecting damping is i told you that for engineering application in general the contribution of damping is very small towards the force response okay so m and k are the system parameters so natural frequency is root over k by m so this is the natural frequency of the system and we have the driving frequency here of the pulse is equal to pi by td this is the driving frequency now you can see that uh, duration of the pulse td is the duration of the pulse that plays an important role in modifying the response it is nothing but pi by omega whereas the time period of the structure time period of model is twice pi by omega n so td by td tn ratio that is the tn time period natural time period is a crucial factor which governs the response spectrum and we will be attempting to find out all the expression in terms of this non dimensional time td by tn okay now if i see the free uh, response of the system subjected to harmonic input that is the ft and ft is equal to p not sin pi t by td so pi by td is the frequency okay that is pi by td is the frequency of the exciting force now we can write the response in two phases one is free vibration case that is some constant a cos omega and t plus b sin omega and t plus the force vibration phase force vibration phase we know that the static displacement is p not by k and it is magnified so here we'll write this uh, one upon 1 by omega by omega n square into sin omega t and there will be no phase angle now let us consider the initial displacement and initial velocities are zero so in that case x zero is taken as zero and x dot zero that is at t equal to zero these two quantities are zero from that conditions if we impose this to response expression we will be able to get the constants a and b and ultimately our response here response here i mean displacement will be xt equal to p not divided by m omega n square and you can see this quantity is nothing but your k so here i have written the uh, this this displacement p not by k so that will be a common factor into sin omega t minus omega by omega n that is the frequency ratio sin omega n t 1 minus 
omega by omega n whole square. So that is the response of the system subjected to harmonic input of frequency omega up to the duration Td. So this expression is valid for T less than equal to Td. Now as soon as the forcing time reaches Td, the system will be free from any external excitation and therefore the system will undergo free vibration after Td. So the time T greater than equal to Td represents the free vibration time. So in that case the response have to be obtained considering the free vibration condition with initial condition that are to be obtained at t is equal to td. So from this expression we have to obtain first the initial displacement and velocity at t is equal to td which will be the initial condition for the free vibration phase that will start at td. So in time parameter we will substitute t minus td in all the uh, cases here after that. So let us see. Now xt is equal to p naught divided by m omega n square into sin omega t minus omega by omega n sin omega n t divided by 1 minus omega by omega n square that is the displacement. And here in terms of static displacement we can again uh, write it by this expression that xt by x xt naught that is x xt naught is the maximum static displacement and it is nothing but p naught by k. So k is m omega n square. So now replacing t by uh, omega by pi by td and omega n by twice pi by tn then we can express this displacement function as non-dimensional displacement function of course xt divided by x xt naught equal to sin pi by td into t minus tn by 2 td that is the coefficient here into sin 2 pi t by tn and here the denominator is 1 minus tn by 2 td whole square. So you can see this ratio that is td by tn plays an important role in the displacement. Now this is the response expression in the force vibration phase t less than equal to td. Now let us investigate for free vibration case. If the time exceeds td that is t equal to greater than td then we have this expression for free vibration as xt equal to xtd that is the uh, initial displacement at uh, t is equal to td into cos 2 pi t minus td divided by tn that is actually it is t by tn but instead of t we have put t minus td because the response calculation have to be done after td. So here it is replaced t is replaced by t minus td plus x dot td is the velocity at time td divided by 2 pi divided by tn sin 2 pi t minus td divided by tn. Okay. So this is the free vibration expression and here we have to substitute the x td and x dot td. Okay. Now x t is given by x td cos 2 pi t minus td divided by tn plus x dot td divided by 2 pi by tn sin 2 pi into t minus td divided by tn. Now for duration of the pulse that is in the force vibration phase that is t less than equal to td we have the earlier expression x by x ht that is the non-dimensional displacement equal to sin pi by td into t 
minus capital Tn divided by 2 Td into sin 2 pi small t by capital Tn divided by 1 minus Tn by 2 Td whole square. Now here if we substitute T is equal to Td we will get one initial condition. So substituting T is equal to Td here you can see it becomes sin pi so it will be 0 and here if we substitute T is equal to Td here and after simplifying we can see that x td by x st naught equal to minus tn divided by 2 td into sin 2 pi td by tn divided by 1 minus tn by 2 td whole square. Now if you write the displacement only because it is in a non-dimensional form so if you write x td then it has to be multiplied by x s t 0 and x s t 0 nothing but p naught divided by m omega n square and here you will get all this quantity t n divided by twice t d into sine twice by t d by t n divided by 1 minus Tn by 2Td whole square. However, we require to express this in terms of uh, this ratio that is uh, displacement at any time to the maximum static displacement. So ultimately this quantity is nothing but your xst maximum. So it is the quantity in the force vibration stage and it is also the expression in the for initial displacement in the free vibration phase and it is obtained by replacing t equal to td in the force vibration expression okay now differentiating the expression of xt if we differentiate the expression of xt we get the velocity and substitute t is equal to td we get the initial velocity for finding solution of the free vibration phase. Now you have seen that free vibration phase require the two important conditions say this is the free vibration case then you require initial velocity x t d into cos omega and t here t will be replaced by t minus t d plus x dot t d divided by omega n and here sine again t will be replaced by t minus t d ok. So we obtained x t d earlier now differentiating this we can also obtain now x uh, dot t d. So substituting these two initial conditions in the uh, force vibration phase and manipulating the using some trigonometrical identities uh, very common identities are uh, required then we can get the response in free vibration stage as xt divided by x st naught that is the non-dimensional displacement you can see this is dimensionless non-dimensional displacement non-dimensional displacement because our intention is to obtain the response spectrum which is always given as a non-dimensional uh, quantity so therefore we not make it dimensionless so this displacement ratio is capital Tn by Td into cos pi Td by Tn capital Tn divided by Tn by 2 Td whole square minus 1 into sin function sin of 2 pi bracket small t by capital Tn minus half small Td by capital Tn and this is valid for T greater than equal to Td. 
now you can see this response this is the free vibration response subjected to initial condition x t d and x dot t d ok. So, we are now requiring to obtain the maximum response whether it is in the force vibration phase and the free vibration phase. So, let us find first for the force vibration phase. During force vibration phase, we have this uh, dimensionless displacement quantity equal to sin pi by Td into T minus capital Tn by 2 Td sin 2 pi T by capital Tn divided by 1 minus capital Tn by 2 Td whole square for T less than equal to Td. So, that is the force vibration stage displacement showing the force vibration response. Now, what happens for finding the maximum we have to find the local peaks. Now, let us differentiate this and equate to 0 that means where the displacement will be maximum the velocity will be 0. So, uh, differentiating this and equating to 0 we will be able to get the time at which the local maxima or local minimum occurs. So, differentiating this we are getting x dot by x s t naught equal to pi by t d into cos pi by t d into t minus pi by t d into cos 2 pi t by t n divided by 1 minus t n by 2 t d whole square. So, that is the expression for the velocity. Now, equating uh, the velocity to be 0, then we get this expression cos pi by T d into T p equal to cos 2 pi T p by T n, where T p is a time where the velocity becomes 0 or local maxima or local minima occurs. So, time at which local maxima or local minima will occur. So, therefore, we substitute it here as uh, T p. So, pi uh, cos pi by T d into T p equal to cos 2 pi T p by T n. So, that is the condition for maximum or minimum response maximum or minimum ok. Now, we have to differentiate this we already differentiated now we equated to 0. So, then we have to find the solution of this equation that equation is of transcendental nature and it gives the solution it will give the solution of infinite number of roots that is infinite number of T p can be obtained. So, after solving this equation it can be seen that this expression T p uh, not equal to 2 k T d divided by 1 minus plus 2 into T d by T n where k is an integer and it may vary from 1 to up to infinity. So, for each value of k you will get 1 and the time at which the, there is a possibility or there will be maxima or minima. But negative sign is there as well as positive sign is there. So, negative sign is used to locate local minima and positive sign is used for local maxima. So, we are interested for maximum value of the peak response. Therefore, using the positive value we get T p equal to 2 k T d divided by 1 plus 2 into T d by T n. So, this is the expression for time where the local maximum will occur in the force vibration phase. Okay. So, now if we substitute uh, say any value of T d by T n and k 1, 2, 3, 4 like that 
we will get different values of Tp and we have to investigate where is the local uh, maxima would occur. Now from the above equation it is possible to get infinite number of roots. However, some roots will be exceeding Td that will be of no use because the pulse acts only for duration 0 to Td uh, and therefore the maximum value of the response in the force vibration phase will occur within Td. So we have to investigate very carefully take for example Td by Tn that is a ratio of uh, pulse duration to the natural time period of the model equal to 3. In this case if I substitute this Td by Tn is equal to 3 for example if I take this then Tp first value that we get is twice into 1 for k is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus 2 into 3. Td by Tn is taken 3 into Td. So here we are getting 2 divided by 7 into Td. Similarly by substituting k is equal to 2 we are getting 4 Td by 7 and k is equal to 3 we are getting 6 Td by 7. But if we substitute but if we take k is equal to 4 then Tp 0 will be 2 into 4 into Td divided by 1 plus 2 into 3. So in that case it will be 8 by 7 Td. So naturally in this case the time exceeds the pulse duration because our pulse is up to Td. So any time exceeding Td will be of no use. So therefore only the values, three values will be required to find the local maximum and we have to find out the response in the fourth vibration cases uh, that is substituting Tp is equal to this and this and this and find out the maximum and pick up the maximum value for plotting the response spectrum. Now let us come to the force vibration case already we now discussed that is uh, Tp that is we found uh, from the solution of the transcendental equation and after substituting this the non-dimensional displacement that is nothing but response spectrum ordinate takes in this form 1 divided by 1 minus Tn by 2 Td whole square into sin 2 pi k divided by 1 plus 2 Td by Tn minus Tn by 2 Td sin 2 pi k divided by 1 plus T capital Tn by 2 Td and this is valid for T less than equal to Td. So this is about the force vibration. Okay. Now we are interested to find the maximum response in the free vibration phase. It is derived that the non-dimensional response, the xt uh, divided by static displacement, maximum static displacement is equal to capital Tn by small td into cos pi td by capital Tn divided by capital Tn by 2 td whole square minus 1 into sin 2 pi into t divided by capital Tn minus half small td by Tn and it is valid for t greater than equal to td. Now you can see that here the maximum value of the free vibration phase is given by this capital Tn by Td into cos pi Td by Tn divided by Tn by 2 Td whole square minus 1. So that is the ordinate of the uh, response spectrum in free vibration case because the maximum value of this quantity sin 2 pi 
into T divided by capital TN minus half TD by capital TN. This maximum value of this is 1. So therefore, the peak response in free vibration case is now becoming capital TN by TD into cos pi TD by TN divided by Tn by 2Td whole square minus 1. You can note that this quantity is a constant. So whatever value we get here is not a function of T, but it is invariably a function of Td by Tn. All the response spectrum that we derived earlier also here it is a function of Td by Tn. You can see Td by Tn that is the ratio of the duration of the pulse to the natural time period is an important factor which governs the response spectrum. So we have uh, shown that how to obtain the, the response spectrum ordinate in analytical form in uh, two phases of vibration one is force vibration phase and another is free vibration phase. Now overall response is taken for plotting the response spectrum curve and response spectrum ordinates are plotted against the ratio of Td by Tn. Okay. Now here you can see some uh, uh, the step by step procedure for construction of response spectrum. This is our time expression for the time that we have obtained by solving the transcendental equation and this time is important to investigate the local peaks. So at this time local peak occurs and therefore substituting this time in the expression for the force vibration phase we can obtain the maximum value. So what are the steps in force vibration phase? Select Td by Tn ratio. You can select Td by Tn ratio from very small value to large value. Given the expression for time Tp that we have obtained here where local maxima occurs in force vibration phase of course you have to exclude the time if it exceeds Td. So in case of we have seen in one example when Td by Tn is 3 and K is 4 then Tp exceeds the Td. So in that case we exclude this time uh, for calculating the local maximum because this is outside the pulse. Hence uh, selecting the uh, relevant values of Tp we find out the peak response in the force vibration phase and then find the value of Rd corresponding to each to which Td corresponding to each Tp corresponding to each Tp that we are finding here for uh, different values of k within Td. Of course, it should be remaining within Td from the derived expression and select the maximum. So we have to select the maximum for getting the response spectrum. In free vibration case, find the value of Rd from the derived expression that is straightforward given and uh, you can see because in absence of damping there will be no reduction of the peak in the free vibration uh, phase. Then select the overall maximum and plot it against Td by Tn ratio. So that will generate the response spectrum curve. Okay. Now you can see in the force vibration phase the non-dimensional displacement maximum displacement Rd is plotted against Td by Tn ratio and we are getting this curve and free vibration phase we are getting Rd against Td by Tn ratio. So this is the free vibration response spectrum and this is the force vibration response spectrum. However, for design purpose we have to take the overall value of the uh, response to find the design displacement or other stresses. So here it is the overall response that is overall maximum response out of force vibration and free vibration you select which one is the overall maximum and then you plot this curve. 
So, this uh, curve shows the overall maximum response of the system, non dimensional of course and to get the actual response you have to multiply it by static displacement. So, this is the response spectrum curve for the half sine pulse and uh, this is overall response. Now, let us illustrate this with an example. We have a cantilever pole say cantilever uniform cross section a fixed base here and uh, its uh, other parameters are given say m mass is given 24.36 kg per meter ei is given as 4.68 into 10 to the power 6 Newton meter square and height of this cantilever that is L is given as 4 meter. So, this is the height of the cantilever it is given here. Now, this cantilever is subjected to base displacement. So, base, base is having displacement, but displacement is of the form of half sine pulse. So, therefore, this is the duration of the pulse Td and Td is given in the problem is 0 0.04 second. So, this is a shock to the cantilever uh, pole and let us see how the cantilever uh, respond to this shock. Okay. We will use the concept of response spectrum that we have derived the other parameters that is used for this calculation of the maximum displacement is are required and these are frequency parameters that is frequency roots you can call it lambda l equal to first frequency uh, param root is 1.875 second frequency parameter is 4.6941 and third frequency parameter is 7.8548. What is frequency parameter? Because in beam when we differentiate in a continuous system which is modeled as a Euler Bernoulli beam, the natural frequency in nth mode is found to be uh, this lambda square Ei by m. So, lambda here it is a lambda into l is there. So, if I uh, put here some say here instead of lambda we can write here beta and then uh, this it will be beta will be lambda by l. So, l will go here as a ml to the power 4. So, ultimately it is written like that say lambda square root over Ei by ml to the power 4 where lambda represents say 1.875 in first mode 4.694 uh, in the second mode like that. Okay. So, uh, for calculate the natural frequencies of the cantilever beam. So, omega 1 equal to 1.875 that is the root uh, square under root Ei by ml to the power 4 and this square is 3.516 and under the root in the numerator that Ei value is substituted 4.68 into 10 to the power 6. In the denominator you are seeing that I have taken uh, uh, the round of figures 24 into 4 to the power 4, 4 is the length of the beam. So, it is coming as 97 radian per second and corresponding to that T1 that is the time period of the oscillation is 2 pi by omega 1 equal to 0 0.065 second. Omega 2 is found it is the lambda 2 you can call it. So, 4.694 whole square under root this is Ei and this is mass into L to the power 4. So, it is coming as 608 radian per second 
and the time period corresponding to that natural frequency is 2 pi by omega 2 equal to 0 0.01 second. In a similar fashion, the third natural frequency is found. Here, of course, this uh, root is 7.854 that we have tabulated in the earlier slide. 855, okay. So, uh, instead of 4.694 which was in the second mode, now we substitute 7.854 whole square into this is EI under root EI. So, this is the value of EI divided by 24 into 4 to the power 4. So, its value become 1702 radian per second and corresponding to that the natural time period in the third mode is 0 0.004 second. Okay. So, the mode shape is required for the calculation of this, especially the models, uh, this participation factor. So, you can see in cantilever beam, the modes are like that. The This is the uh, second mode, this is third mode fourth mode, fifth mode. However, the first mode is very common and here first mode will be like that. And it will predominate all the displacement values. This is the first mode, okay. First mode second mode, third mode, fourth and fifth mode. The nodal values are shown here. So, this is the condition at the fixed end where the slope and deflections are zero and then it gradually the deflect it is deflected and this. So, mode shape function in mathematical form is given as uh, phi x equal to a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x minus cos lambda x plus alpha a constant into sin hyperbolic lambda x minus sin lambda x where alpha is nothing but minus cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l divided by sin hyperbolic lambda l plus sin lambda l. The mode shape can be normalized by any means. There are different ways of normalization and uh, we can also select this coefficient a1 as 1 for this plotting purpose. So, in that case uh, if you substitute this uh, here x is equal to l you will get the maximum displacement which generally occurs at the free end will differ in different modes because mode shape is arbitrary. So, if you can normalize with the help of maximum deflection then this A1 will be different so that the deflection at the free end which is the maximum deflection becomes 1. Okay. Now, let us illustrate this calculation for the first mode. Equation of motion. This E i del 4 y by del x 4 plus m del square y by del t square equal to minus m y double dot g. y double dot g is the ground acceleration. And we have the base displacement that is given by this form of half sine pulse uh, that is uh, it is like that uh, the displacement of this form and maximum displacement is some value is taken here say delta, delta naught is the maximum displacement and then it is expressed in terms of say y is equal to del naught into sin pi by td into t. So, this is the frequency of uh, this pulse, uh, this sine wave. So, pi by Td and delta naught is the some amplitude of the displacement. Okay. 
now here uh, after specifying this delta say for example we have taken this delta equal to 1 and then the eta i double dot t how it comes it comes due to decoupling procedure adopted for the continuous system now what are the steps in decoupling procedure if you use the model superposition technique then you have to substitute y is equal to phi i x eta i t in the differential equation of motion partial differential equation of motion and then use the orthogonality condition uh, and integrating both sides with in the domain of the beam you will be able to get the decoupled equation eta i double dot t plus omega i square eta t equal to pi square divided by t d square that is the uh, capital gamma n that is the mo uh, model participation factor into sin pi by t d into t ok. So, model participation factor is given by this expression gamma n equal to uh, this uh, numerator is integration phi n x dx 0 to l divided by 0 to l phi n square x dx. So, for each mode we calculate the this uh, gamma n and it is given as 0 0.783, 0 0.43, 4 and 0.259 and this is the frequency parameters 1.875 in the first mode, second mode it is 4.694, in the third mode it is 7.855 whereas alpha n is the coefficient in the mode shape function that is associated with the sine hyperbolic and sine terms. Now let us show the calculation. Having known the natural frequency and time period, now we obtain this ratio Td by T1 is equal to 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.065 equal to 0.615. So this is the ratio of Td by T1. In force vibration phase, the maximum response will occur at this time Tp equal to 2k Td divided by 1 plus 2 Td by T1. Now take k is equal to 1. So in that case substituting Td is, uh, k is equal to 1 and Td is equal to 0 0.04 we get Td by T1 equal to and Td by T1 equal to 0 0.615 we get Tp is equal to 0 0.036 second which is less than Td. So, there is a possibility of occurring a peak at this time. Now, if we take k is equal to 2, then Tp becomes 0 0.142 second, which is greater than Td. So, we exclude this time. So, we now investigate the peak at this time, Tp is equal to 0 0.036 in force vibration phase. Okay. So, in the force vibration phase, now Rd1 is calculated by putting this Td by T1 as this and uh, this Tp that we are taking we have taken here this is the expression for Tp for k is equal to 1 and this is also Tp and uh, we have now calculated this factor is also known T1 by 2 Td whole square it is known and after simplifying this numerical calculations whether you do in uh, excel sheets or in matlab or in hand calculator you will get the result as 1.7006 so that is the rd1 that is a response of the uh, first generalized coordinates because in the model superposition technique that we have d uh, shown here eta i dot T represents the generalized coordinate in the ith mode and this is similar to the single degree freedom uh, system equation. So therefore, we are using the same formulation that we have derived for basic oscillator that is a single degree freedom system without damping and hence we are obtaining this expression that we get 1.7006 represents the maximum ordinate of the 
non dimensional displacement or maximum value of the non dimensional displacement in the force vibration phase similarly for other modes you can calculate uh, here k represents the mode number you should not uh, confuse it with this mode uh, with the index of the transcendental equation solution of the transcendental equation so here it is mode number so for other modes k is equal to 2 3 because we are now uh, in the problem we have stated that we have to consider the contribution of first three modes so for other modes also similar calculation can be performed in the free vibration phase the ordinate of the response spectrum is given as t1 by td into cos pi td by t1 divided by t1 by 2 td whole square minus 1 and substituting the numerical values and always taking the absolute value we are getting that in the free vibration stage the maximum ordinate is 1.69 so ultimately we have to select for the first mode the greater one that is 1.7006 okay. now displacement at free end due to contribution of the first mode we now rd1 is the maximum so we have substituted here rd1 as 1.7006 this is the static displacement so p naught by omega 1 square because after discretization we have seen that coefficient of acceleration term is 1 because of orthogonalization process so here uh, coefficient is 1 that is mass is treated as 1 so therefore p naught by omega 1 square is the maximum static displacement into gamma 1 the modal participation factor in the first mode into phi 1 l so phi 1 l we have taken as a non-dimensional quantity as 1 the maximum displacement at the free end and therefore after performing this uh, calculation we get it is 0 0.013 meter so the response considering the contribution of other modes now can be calculated as r d k k is equal to 1 to 3 the summation have to be carried out from 1 to 3 into p naught by omega k square into gamma k into phi k l that is the uh, ordinate of the response spectrum for kth mode then p naught by omega k square is the static displacement corresponding to that mode into gamma k is the modal participation factor in that mode into phi k l displacement of the free end of the cantilever model displacement at the kth mode so overall maximum response spectrum curve can also be used knowing the td by tn ratio for this problem and uh, for different modes we have td by tn ratio and we can also pick up the value of rd from that graph this is the overall maximum uh, comparing the free and force vibration phase and then we can get the total response so that is the use of the shock spectrum to get the maximum displacement in case of continuous structure shock spectrum is uh, obtained using the simple concept of single degree freedom system and then utilizing the td by tn ratio or in case of uh, this harmonic excitation omega by omega n ratio that are the parameters to be taken and uh, corresponding response ordinate is selected and then the maximum response displacement response is calculated summing up the contribution of all the modes so let us summarize today's lecture in this lecture we discussed about tangent response due to shock in the form of half sine wave during force vibration phase as well as free vibration phase maximum displacements are obtained however it is interesting to note that during free vibration phase there are multiple values of time for peak to occur separately peak is also obtained in free vibration stage overall maximum response is selected and plotted against td by tn
and response spectrum curve is developed for the displacement for such shock excitation. To illustrate the concept, an example of continuous system, namely a cantilever beam or cantilever pole with base motion of half sine wave type is discussed. Thank you very much. Thank you.